Zerlak rolled his shoulders in anticipation of the coming landing, shifting eagerly in his seat and running his claws along the grip of his plasma caster. His group would be running a joint mission with the now infamous Terran Marine Corps, specifically the 1st Interplanetary Division, or as they are more commonly known, the Housekeepers. He only had a fuzzy understanding of the colloquial nickname, something to do with their ancient Terran slug throwers used during the major war in their history be named some kind of cleaning implement, broomsticks or dirt sweeper or something of that sort. What he fully understood was that they earned the nickname when they had swept through an entire entrenched enemy position using the relics. One of the marines across from him had one such weapon hanging at her side. The thing was a hunk of steel and wood, and even though it was clearly religiously maintained, it was showing its age. The results spoke for themselves nonetheless. Every deployment the housekeepers were sent on saw them returning with even more decorations and medals than before. Every single mission. It had him hopeful that he would finally get to see the Terrans in action, as even lesser divisions were popping up in the extranet with details of impossible victories. The explosive rise to dominance on the field of battle, no matter where, had so many of his compatriots eager to see just what tactics allow the youngest military to be so successful. It was rather abruptly pulled from his musings of potential battle strategies by two quick deep thuds against the ship. That was odd. They shouldn't be nearing the planet for another hour, and those slimy Kvetel wouldn't be opening fire on this drop shuttle for another two after that. You know, once they deployed into the proper atmosphere. Before he could think of any probable issues, a loud, notably Terran clap resounded through the shuttle. A heartbeat later, the thuds repeated themselves, become the obvious sound of one of the marines stomping on the floor. Then they clapped again. The noise seemed to get the attention of everyone in the shuttle, in the form of confused looks from the non-Terrans, and amused grins from the Terrans. As the marine repeated the act of attempting to stop a hole through the floor plating, Zerlak fully believed the death orders were more than capable of that if they actually tried. Several of the other marines clapped in time with them. And so it began as the entirety of the first began to time their stomps to the floor, finishing the assault with an eager clap. Yet it didn't end there. Just as before, anyone else could voice their rightful confusion over the random violence. The Marine who started it bellowed out a line that made even less sense. He called out to someone, though Zerla couldn't figure out who for the life of him, about how they were an experienced youth who had gone to do great things, he thought. As sudden as it was, he was hopelessly lost over why this had started. And his, and everyone else's confusion only grew further, as the rest of the marines cried out in unison to use a rock against that poor boy the first marine called out. Not once did the rhythmic stomping and clapping stop. Then things shifted, and the marine called out to a young man full of potential, again of unknown identity, claiming they were a hardened survivor from the streets, going to build themselves an empire against an entire world. And as a tiny speck of understanding dawned on Zerlak, the rest of the marines all repeated their threat of rocking that person. Not once did the rhythmic stomping and clapping stop. Zerlak realised this was not a call to lynch someone, or an evaluation of the potential of a talented individual, but a chant the Terrans used to build a battle further, and he was terrified. The effect of the primal music and the heavy stomping and clapping filled him with dread. The unfolding story of a now-aged man begging for peace after a lifetime of fighting being cast aside, and the enthusiastic chanting of the crowd of marines brought forth Zerlak's instinctual urge to curl into a tight ball and wait for the threat to pass. He was not the only one crippled by the Terran's powerful war chants. Not once did the rhythmic stomping and clapping stop. The Terrans continued to win engagements because they throw their entire beings into everything they do, and that effort usually has the effect of showing just how serious these death orders are about devotion. To most militaries around the galaxy, to throw one's entire self into something would usually have a limit of personal investment. This is not the case in Terran militaries, where personal investment is much the same as societal obligation. Thus, when the Terrans throw themselves into something, it is taken to mean that they are devoting with a lack of any limitations whatsoever. It is this lack of limiting their devotion that has led to numerous units and factions within the galactic community being utterly terrified of things as simple as soldiers hyping themselves up. 